Let's go, let's go more. Set it, set it, set it, set it. Oh, shit, it's a hog. Holy shit. Don't rush this car. Wait. Dude, dude, actually. Oh, he's diving. He's diving. Yo, don't reel Yeah, yeah, too much. Here we go. In the next. The ocean holds a certain inescapable allure. It pulls us towards it, prompting some sort of adventure through its foreign and mysterious nature. For many, that adventure is simple, a relaxing swim at the beach or a trip out on the boat. However, a fisherman's connection to the ocean is deeper. Not only is the ocean the setting of an angler's obsession, it's what enables that obsession to exist in the first place. Every true fisherman has a great respect for the ocean, because they're hyper aware of the fragility of the marine environment that supports the fish they hunt. As high school seniors, we've grown up during a transitional period for the ocean, as it goes from a vast, seemingly imperishable expanse, to simply another piece of evidence of our destruction of the environment around us. We've watched the fish we love suffer for our greed and apathy. When our classes ended and our year-end project began, we set out on a journey to find that certain fish and understand how we can restore it to its previous glory. I used to fish very, very occasionally. Nobody in my family really fishes. Um, but as I got more and more into fishing, I wanted to catch bigger and bigger fish and have bigger and bigger fights. And um, just the natural progression of fishing in the Northeast brought me the striped bass. It's really the king of these waters. Um, it's the biggest, strongest, and most beautiful fish in my opinion. I started fishing seriously around freshman year of high school. And just the challenge of landing a striped bass is kind of what keeps me going. It's kind of an obsession at this point. Um, it occupies my mind when it really should not be thinking about it. Um, I dream about it. It's, it's something that I cannot stop and will not stop for the rest of my life. I'm always looking for the next challenge on the water. And for me now, that's fishing for striper because they are the ultimate challenge for a recreational fisher in New England. Stripers are, are such a game, such a challenge, and that's why I fish for stripers. It's, it's the next challenge for me, the next thing to chase. I think that the striped bass is the best game fish in the Northeast. Um, it's just, it's such a smart animal and there's, there's so much to think about when fishing for it how hard it is to catch a striper makes you develop a real respect for it. Striper fishing is a pretty exhilarating experience. There can be silence and then when you get the hits it just everything changes. And that's what that's when all the work pays off. Beyond the excitement of catching fish, uh, getting the striper onto land or onto a boat is uh, extremely challenging. Um, and that's part of the beauty of the sport. There's a certain rush of uh, adrenaline and excitement that just runs through your body and course through your blood the moment you get that fish hit. And it can go away in an instant and it can come back in an instant. You never really know when that, when that fish is going to strike, which is part of what makes it most exciting.
Most Milton Academy students' school year consists of too much work and too little sleep. The stresses of the classroom follow us home as we grind away the point of a pencil while bent over a desk. We spend hours with our faces fixed on a screen, swiping through useless pages of Instagram and Facebook. However, when school ends, fishing season begins, and the weight of the past months is lifted. During the summer, we spend our hours outside with a rod in hand, focused yet peaceful. Waking up is no longer an annoyance, rather an opportunity to catch the fish as the sun rises. All year, we looked forward to starting this transition a month earlier than usual, getting out of classes in early May to start our senior projects on striped bass conservation. We spent the weeks before planning, be it rigging our equipment, scouting fishing spots, or studying tide charts. Finally, school ended, and time to set that first hook, we hit the water. However, we quickly realized it wouldn't be that simple. Basically the entire first week of this project was fishless. I think we landed one fish in, late in the week. Just because you go out and fish doesn't mean you're gonna catch fish. The fish need to be healthy, they need to have a big enough population to be actively feeding. Um, and at times in the history of the Northeast, it really hasn't been that. And I think we saw that. Um, we definitely expected there to be more fish, so it was incredibly discouraging to have a pretty low number of fish caught and fish interactions. And it's it's really it's really tough to read all these stories and reports about like the good old days, just fish on every cast, up to 50, 60 pounds, and then go out and fish for four hours straight and catch not a single thing. Um, it makes you wonder if if they migrated up yet or if there's simply not enough fish to be caught. days when we would go out in the water, we'd get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, get to the boat, head out immediately, and have our lines in for hours and hours, and not get a single hit. And that's frustrating, um, just to know that the fish aren't there. You know, you have to wonder, is it just because of the season, or are the fish really not here? Because we weren't catching them, and, and we were putting in the time that, that you need to put in. And it's kind of scary, you know? Um, these are the fish that we've invested so much time of our lives into, and they're just in trouble. They're declining. A lot of fishermen uh, tell you that the back one and in the books we read uh, you see like there were so many so many fish uh, and then when you go out and you get no fish in say a five-hour fishing trip uh, it's really disappointing it makes you wonder uh, just how depleted the fish resources are Fishing is a game of odds. The more time put in, the more success you'll have. Every day we were out there casting, trying to find whatever fish were in the Massachusetts water. The fact that we weren't catching only further motivated us. Finally, after hours of grinding, the striper started biting.
a factor. If we were looking at the clouds, the weather, the temperature, the tides, the current, the location, just everything that one could think about in relation to nature. And everything was being factored into where we were going and how we were fishing. You're putting in that time, you're putting in that mental dedication to getting that fish and then the second you get that hit and you set the hook and you start reeling, all that time is paid off. And the fish really embodies all of that hard work. Um, and I think that's what's so special about catching a striper. The thrill of the catch is really that split second when you realize you got a fish on. It's feeling that fish take your lure. It's setting the hook as hard as you can. It's the hours of just casting with no fish, just interrupted in, in an instant, in a, a massive rush of adrenaline. It's, you, can't, you can't really describe it unless you've actually felt it. So in the second week of projects um, at the Neponset River, I landed my first fish of the season. It was a pretty small schoolie fish, uh, about 19 inches, but I really was just overjoyed. And um, seeing that first fish of the season and seeing the beauty of the stripes and the, the contrast of the colors and the, the strong dorsal fin popping out was really just a sight to see. Um, I didn't care that it was small, I didn't care that it didn't fight hard. Um, just seeing the fish and knowing that they're here and knowing that they're feeding was really, made me extremely happy. stages of the season we were catching fish that were anywhere from 11 to maybe 15 inches which when you think about uh, the striper legal size being 28 inches those are small fish. We definitely stuck to it getting out there uh, early and often um, fishing long hours that size gradually increased as we went along uh, and we would check the migration map see uh, one of these bigger fish coming up the coast if at all uh, and, and eventually we did see some, some larger fish. Set it, set it, set it, set it. There you go, there you go. Bring him in. No rush. It's just running straight into you. You cannot tighten that thing I was talking about. Yeah. Oh, we're getting a little head shake. Oh, yeah. oh, do you know a surface out there? Yeah. Yeah, we're... Run it. I'm gonna get the nut. Alright, cool. Make sure you keep catching on the hole. Let it run if it wants it. I got it. I'll I got a boga if you want. I can boga it. Alright. Oh, yeah. I think he has dude, dude, we gotta have the fish. Alright, let's, let's get, get him. Let's get him over here. Don't reel too far. Don't reel too far. After fishing almost every day for over a month, we began to wind down as our senior project's end came into sight. All the time we'd invested in trying to locate bass in the Massachusetts waters 
have rewarded us with some truly beautiful stripers. Wanting to get our hands on just one more, we awoke at sunrise to catch the early morning action. We caught our mackerel, put our lines in, and got to work. After four silent, fishless hours, the reel screamed. Oh, oh, it's a big fish! It's a mess. Oh, it's a really big fish. Oh my god. This is so big. Land oh it. my god. Oh my land god. That, land that, baby. Holy shit. Get that. Oh. Get it on, get it on. Let's go! Oh my god. This yep. is so big. Yep. Holy shit. Let's go. Look at this. Look at this. Oh shit. This is a hog. Holy shit. Dude, that was fighting like a hog, dude. That, that is a, so that hard big. Reel. <laughs> that dorsal dude is a fucking like dragon. Oh my god! Dude, that is so big! Oh my god! Wow. Dude. Oh my god! Wait, yo, I'm not even kidding. That's like the biggest fish I've probably ever caught. It's really? So Oh my god, Jesus Christ! He is so big! Oh my god! <laughs> Dude! Let's go, let's do it! That's a f beast of a fish. might see stripers in magazines or websites or, or hear stories about them, but, but nothing is the same when you hook up with that fish, you get it on, on board, and you look it in the eyes, and something else is kind of triggered within you. Uh, you realize that these creatures are very much real, uh, quite possibly very much in danger. We're, we're fishing at a rate that the population isn't rebounding every season. And that's dangerous because the population isn't going to help itself, you know, it starts with the humans. And if we're not taking the action that we need to, to be helping the fish population, then it's just going to continue to decline. The reality is that the stripers are part of a much larger ecosystem, and they're actually a keystone species in a lot of the New England region. And when their population declines, so does the rest of the marine environment. So it's not just killing one fish, it's killing hundreds. We have a moral responsibility, not just to stripers and not just to their ecosystem, but to every animal on Earth. And so far, humans aren't doing that. It's our duty as anglers and as humans to put them in the best place possible to survive, to thrive, really. The best thing that anglers can do is release every fish they catch. We really need to be devoted to the health and care of the animals when you're catching them and releasing them, um, using the proper size tackle to make sure the fight is short and they still um, have enough energy to survive is really critical. And about the same amount of time that it takes to catch should be put into the release of the fish. It's cool to know that you reeled that fish in, you know, took pictures with it, measured it, weighed it, and then you just let it go to live its life. It's kind of like you just had this brief little snapshot of what that whole fish's life is. You know, it's it's spawning, growing up, feeding, migrating along the entire coast, and you're that little snapshot of time in its life, and then you just release it back into that timeline. It's pretty cool. Releasing the fish is actually one of my favorite parts of uh, fishing, not only because of concern for the environment, but uh, just seeing that, that beautiful creature uh, getting back into the ocean and shooting off uh, down to the water is a really incredible experience that, that feels really, really powerful. A lot of people wonder why we dedicate as much time and effort to fishing for striped bass as we do to just release the fish soon after we catch it. 
Our answer to that would be, how can you hold a striper in your hands and not think it's a fish worth saving?